Uh, a lot of you out there probably don't use a, a calendar all that much, but I live and die by a calendar because I schedule meetings like this. <laughs> and if I didn't have use my calendar, I'd be dead. And then uh, if you get to that point, then you start going, well, there's other things that need to be on my calendar that aren't really meetings. Like uh, last week I had to get brakes done in my car. Uh, and this, this week I need to uh, go down to the DMV and, and uh, get a new driver's license because I lost my wallet, stuff like that. Well, they're not really time-based because you don't yet have a time for them, but there are things that need to be done this week before you go on vacation or something like that. And there's and using these calendars to do that, you, you can sort of do it, but it's not nice and it's not easy and it, and it doesn't start uh, moving that thing around based on whether you did it or not. So we need a new uh, system for our calendars and our to-do lists, and that's what Timeful is going to show us right now. Uh, who are you? My name is Jacob Bank. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Timeful. Before coming to Timeful, I was in the PhD program in computer science at Stanford where I did research in the artificial intelligence lab on machine learning and data mining, became interested in the problem of time management, um, and ended up starting a company with my two academic advisors, Yoav Shoham, who's a professor in the AI lab at Stanford, and Dan Ariely, who's a well-known behavioral economist at Duke. Yeah, yeah, I, I just talked to Dan at a, a conference recently. Yeah. Um, so this space is an interesting one. I, I almost call it the app replacement space because uh, human is coming out, and they're going to replace your contacts, and you guys are trying to uh, come out with a new calendar and to-do list mixed together, right? So we don't think of it quite that way. We started with, <laughs> we started with the problem of time management. Yeah. What are the mistakes that people make in time management? I procrastinate, I waste my most productive hours of the day on email, I forget to go to the DMV, um, and we looked at the behavioral mistakes and where people need help in managing their time. And then it turns out that a lot of the reasons that people make bad time management decisions is because their calendar and to-do list aren't doing enough to help them. So we want to build, the tool we're building by chance does replace the calendar and to-do list, um, but the real goal is behavior change, not just changing features. It, it's interesting that a lot of people don't use the calendar because it feels like work. It, it, it yeah. feels like you're filling out a database, which is sort of what, really what you are doing. Totally. You know, putting in a, a calendar item for this meeting and uh, yeah. putting in you know, where it's supposed to be. And if you really fill it out completely, it's a, it's a bit of work to do that, right? Tons. So the calendar is a funny one because it's really a receipt of time you've already spent. Yeah. You, you agree over email or by text to meet, and then you enter all the details in the calendar just so you don't forget. It'll send you an automated reminder. It might do a couple other things for you. Um, but it's a lot of work to put it in the calendar and not that much value that the calendar is really bringing to you other than not forgetting and binding you to the commitment. What, what we're trying to do is figure out how we can, with little bits of user work, provide the user a lot of value. Yeah. Um, you specify something once, that you want to do. Let's say you want to read more. You can specify in Timeful. I want to read five times a week. And the system forever will find you time and slot it into your schedule. Just a little bit of work from you and hopefully a, a big payoff in terms of behavior change. That's how we think about the problem. Yeah. Can we see it so that pe people have a context? Yeah, absolutely. So, this so this is sort of like uh, taking a time uh, 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 to-do list and a calendar and then putting a lot of smarts into it. Exactly. Okay. It's, it's bringing stuff that wouldn't normally be scheduled and using algorithms to inject it onto your calendar. So what are we seeing here? So what we have here is uh, it'll look very familiar. It's a grid. It has rectangles. Those yeah. rectangles have locations. Those are meetings. Those are concrete events. They have a start time and an end time. But there's lots of more flexible things that need to kind of float around our calendar and find time. And we want to make it really easy to get things on your schedule because the behavioral research shows that things on your schedule get done. Give me some uh, idea because I, I know about meetings and calendar. You know, mm -hmm. calendars do pretty well with that. You know, yep. I'm going to be meeting with my boss at 10 a.m. on a Monday morning. But what are some of these other kinds of things that yeah. you can put on? Um, so if I look, I look further into the evening. Here's a here's a few different examples of other things. Um, I follow up with Alice and call Bob, and those are both tasks. So I specified these are tasks. I want to do them sometime today. I don't yet know when I'll have time to do it today. And the system says, well, 5 o'clock is a good time to follow up with Alice. So I can say, you know, thanks, Timeful. That's a good suggestion. I accept it. And now it's on my calendar at that time. And I can easily you know, reposition it to 5.15 or 5.45 or back to 5 as necessary. Now with tasks, because I have a whole bunch of tasks, yeah. uh, if you don't do them today, because uh, you know. We're, if you don't do them, they'll just kick down into the future. And eventually, we'll get more and more annoying to try to get you to actually do them. 
And um, this, this is a problem that we've noticed with a lot of existing to-do lists is people treat them as kind of write-only databases. They put in these hundreds of things and maybe 20% of them actually get done because they're, they become irrelevant or they're just so unpleasant. And we want to avoid this list of shame that never actually gets done. So the system will, will keep suggesting good times for you to do it. And then eventually you either do it or you realize it's never getting done and kind of free yourself from that obligation. So let's say, yeah. I don't want to call Bob today. 5.30, not a bad time, not, not a good time for it. I'll reject that suggestion, dismiss for now, and it'll come back some other time when the system thinks it's good. Um, dinner at home is an interesting one. It's another type of flexible thing that doesn't fit naturally on the calendar. It's not a to-do, it's what we call a good habit. Yeah. And a good habit is what I was alluding to earlier. You specify what you want to do, how much you want to do it. Let's say I want to have dinner at home four times a week, and the system will find time. Let's say I accept that for 6.30. And when you check it off, with these you can do some accounting and you can see how well you're doing over the course of the week. And then historically you can see how well you're doing over time at building these good habits. That's cool. Does it uh, work at all on location? Because if I put something like buy a screwdriver, yeah. uh, which might be a task, but it's not an important task. It's not something I have to do like in the next yeah. week. It's just, hey, I, I noticed I, I broke a screwdriver and I need a new one. Um, could it put, could it warn me when I'm near a, a hardware store? Hey, you you put a, a yeah. screwdriver on your. We think uh, we think really deeply about kind of the context people are going to be in when they're performing tasks, and that can be the location they're going to be in, or it can be their cognitive state, whether they have a lot of energy or low energy. Yeah. Um, location right now, we're really optimized around home and work. There's a class of tasks you can do at home, and there's a class of tasks you, you can do at work. Yeah. And we want to be good at making sure we don't suggest things in, in the wrong place. But as you point out, you know, going forward, there's many other classes of locations that are relevant to certain tasks. Anytime I'm near a grocery store, remind me to buy milk, et cetera. There's lots of cool things we can do, so yeah, stay tuned. Okay. Um, is this a free app? Does it... It's a free app. Okay. Yep. Um, iPhone only at the moment. At the moment. Yeah. Are you thinking about Android? That, Android's, an, be the Android's a crucial platform. We all know it. I'm not ready to make any announcements there yet. Okay. That's always uh, somebody's going to bother me in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Why aren't they doing it on Android? But I, I hear this over and over again that uh, entrepreneurs build on iOS first, prove that the, there's a market, prove the use case, and then uh, build a team to copy it and put it on, on Android. Yeah. Um, what else do we need to know about it? I, keep going. I, uh, um, show so, me some of the yeah, kinds so, of so, things. So, you can so do. another important thing is so far we've talked about getting things that weren't previously on your schedule onto your schedule so, that, so you get them done. Another part of the time management problem we're really interested in is freeing you from obligations that aren't naturally, that aren't actually a good use of your time. We hear over and over again people say, I'm in too many meetings, I'm in too many meetings, I'm in too many meetings, they're not a good use of my time. Give me a, a taste of how you do the Yeah, meetings. so let's say that... Because Google Calendar, if you yeah. just have five meetings on your calendar today, they're cold, it, right. it, it treats them all. They clutter same. up, they get stacked, it's annoying. So let's say Design Jam, this meeting from three to four. Uh, I'm more interested in the back-end weekly meeting. I'm not such a designer. So I want to do what's called sidelining. And what sidelining does is it pushes it to the margins of my calendar. So I can still see that there's something there, but it's not in the foreground cluttering my calendar as a major commitment. So I can, I can check in. This is good for, like, for my information kind of events. And we've seen this used in a lot of ways from meetings where you're an optional attendee to games in the World Cup that you want to track. And now that I've reclaimed this time, I can take, you know, work on presentation, and fit it nicely into that slot, for example. Because um, this is, we think a lot about opportunity cost. Time is a really hard resource to manage. You can only spend your time on, on, one, on one thing at a time. Um, and if you're in that meeting, you're not working on that presentation. And yeah. because the calendar only shows some tiny subset of things you need to do, it's really hard to reason about what you're missing out on. Now, uh, that gets to w w where you're building a company around this and, and yeah. where it has some defensibility. I, before the cameras <laughs> came on, I joked with you, you know, Google could add to-dos to calendars and, and yeah. take away some of your reason for existing pretty easily. You know, they haven't innovated on the calendar mm -hmm. or the contact list if you're human for a long time. And I, I assume that you know if they got motivated, they could do that. So we don't think of it so much as you know tacking features onto the calendar, just bringing to-dos into the calendar. There's a couple key technical innovations that we think are necessary to get time management right. The first is a, a data modeling exercise, which is how can we take all these different things that have very different properties, locations, times, and put them into one model that allows you to reason about them. If you just have the approach of a calendar and tack on to-dos, you're never going to get the, the deep unifying data model. And second, 
the system needs to actually help you sort through this, this mass of things. Every calendar and to-do list out there right now is just a repository of stuff that you put in, and you can manually reorder it. But um, time management is just too tough to leave it all to humans. We need algorithms to help us. And that's our second main kind of technical contribution based on some work we did in machine learning and data mining to understand these things need, you need to do and help you put them on your schedule. Now, this hooks up to the Apple Calendar on the iPhone? Exactly. So if, uh, if I already have a meeting on the Apple Calendar, which might have come from Exchange. Or, or Google Calendar Google or Yahoo. Calendar. Yep, so a Apple pulls in pretty much every major calendar service. They present it to us. We take those in, and we, we, we sync back both ways. So Got you it. can use your existing calendar on desktop and iPad as, as so training wheels. So if you sideline something, what happens on the Google Calendar? On Google Calendar, it still looks like a normal event. So it's, it's actually yeah. really funny. My, I have, I'm a huge user of sideline calendars for sports schedules and shared calendars. So I have, you know, at every time, three or four sideline events. And then when I go to my Google Calendar, it's just a complete, it's a mess. It's, it's chaos. But we'll, we'll get to the web sometime soon. Yeah. The, um, do you bring in Facebook events? Because a lot of people are planning mm -hmm. events on Google Plus or Facebook or yeah. Eventbrite, right? Most people that, that we've seen have already linked their Facebook calendars into iCal by installing the Facebook app on their phone. So we get those. That's another really common place people use sidelining. Their whole yeah. Facebook calendar comes in as sideline events. And then when there's something they actually want to go to, they promote it to a full event. And then it comes into the main focus of the screen. Right. That's cool. Anything else we should uh, take a look at while we're here? Yeah, so this is, this is the main view, which is sort of the calendar day optimization view. We also have a to-do list view, which is kind of a zoom out view, all the things vying for your time over the coming days. So here's where you can track your progress on your habits at the yeah. top. And then you scroll down, you see the stuff for today, you see the stuff for tomorrow, and then you see the stuff for off into the future, and then an archive of your completed tasks. So that's where you zoom out and do more long-term planning. Yeah. How long does it take to really get, get used to this new calendar compared to Google Calendar or, or whatnot? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> The calendar-like functionality will be very familiar to people. Fully migrating all of their to-dos, because people are so different in the way they manage their to-dos. Some people use digital to-do lists. Most people use pen and paper, legal pad, post-it note. So what we see is it kind of takes a couple of days of really um, investing and learning the system. And then once people put in those two, three, four days, they're, ho they're, they're hooked in and stay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you going to do an API for things like IFT? Because if it's already when I check in on Foursquare, it, yeah. it, if I F T T T uh, looks at uh, Foursquare, says, "Oh, well, I'll put that on the calendar." Because uh, three months from now, when I'm doing yeah. my expense report, I look yeah. back at what what was that expense report? Oh yeah, we were at yeah. a restaurant. Oh yeah, we were with uh, you know so and so and so and so, and that's important stuff for expense reports. Yeah, right? making it easy to automatically get things into the calendar from whatever data sources they live in right now is crucial to us. Data ingestion is going to be really crucial. Right now, only the calendar, but you can imagine lots of data sources that we'll want to play with in the future. Email, existing test management systems, other specific vertical systems like expense reporting. So lots of plans in those directions. Are you looking, are, uh, if you use a competitor, Tempo.ai, they mm -hmm. look into your email and even out on the web for context addresses and uh, emails that went back yeah. and forth about a meeting at Flipboard, for instance. Uh, do you, are you thinking of it? Yeah, a, a lot of people are doing nice things about taking the existing calendar and bringing in supporting data or providing some, some interface tricks. We're really focused on behavior change and how can we allow you to get the right things done. We're yeah. less focused on bringing in context around things in your existing meetings. Certainly, eventually, these are features we're consider, but right now it's all about behavior change. One thing I do like about Tempo is they found uh, if you're in a conference call, mm -hmm. they found the conference call number and then the ID number that you always have yeah. to punch in to join the call, right? Do you do things, nice little things like Quick that? Quick dial feature in, in development coming okay. soon. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So yeah, I'm going yeah. down your feature list. What else is on your feature list? <laughs> Make it easy for me. <laughs> um, Tell me a little bit about the company. How is it funded and how many people are working there? And sure. So um, a couple months ago, we closed a Series A led by Coastal Ventures. We've raised almost $7 million. Um, Keith Raboy is our partner there, and he's yeah. also on our board. Um, we also have some funding from Kleiner and Greylock, Data Collective, Ashton Kutcher, and a couple other nice, nice angels. Um, <clears throat> we've been in operation for about a year and a half. Um, we'll be coming out of stealth with, with this launch. Um, we're under 20 people about two-thirds engineers, and then one-third on sort of the product and design 
side Very of things. Cool. And the three co-founders are me, Yob, and Dan. Very cool. Anything else I should know about it? Because it seems pretty straightforward. It's one of those things you got to try it for a week and see if it works for you. Yep. Try it for and a week. It probably does. Get things scheduled, get them done, and hopefully it'll provide a lot of value. Very cool. Where do I get it again? Uh, in the App Store. Time hop? Time full. Time full. <laughs> T-I-M-E-F-U-L dot com. Very cool. Thank you for coming. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks.